Merkoles, salamat sapagkat sa araw-araw na ginawa ng Diyos, patuloy na ang katapatan niya ay nahahayag. Hindi niya tayo iniwanan, hindi niya tayo pinababayaan. Almost three months have passed after the breakout of this pandemic, the mere fact that we are still alive, buhay na buhay, malakas, lalong kumikinang ang ating mga pananampalataya, lalong nananagana ang ating mga inasahan sa ating mga puso. It's a testimony of the faithfulness of God working in us and working through us. Salamat sa Diyos na bagamat matagal na po tayo hindi nakakapasok sa ating mga bahay-sambahan to conduct our worship and study of the Word, pero ang Diyos ay hindi kayang limitahan ng lugar, hindi kayang limitahan ng building. In fact, dinala lang tayo doon sa essential at sa basic, which is what? Building every families to become what? The place of worship. Building family altar speaks of what? It's an expression of our devotion through worship. So, during this lockdown, salamat sa Panginoon sa pagkat patuloy po tayong nagiging strong as a family ang ating pananampalatay patuloy na pinatitibay. Just to give you a testimony of what this lockdown na uh, brought to us, alam mo ninyo, just uh, last week, okay? Uh, during the two and a half months of the lockdown, ang itinuro sa atin ng Panginoon, not only to build our family altar, but to put our houses or household in order. Kasi yung family altar ay magiging strong lang kung ang pamilya ay intact. Close. Family ties, ika nga. If the family continues to grow themselves, grow the relationship with God as a family, doon po nagiging matibay ang family altar. Just uh, last week, okay, noong pong uh, Saturday, today is Wednesday, but last Saturday, that was the first time na kami po ay iwahiwalay in our family altar. Okay? Kami po ay nasa Silang, Cavite. Yung panganay ko po ay nasa kanyang condo somewhere in Paranaque. At yung pong aking uh, pangalawa, kasama ang kanyang pamilya ay nasa Tagig. So, kasama lang po namin sa silang ay ang aking bunso. So, in my mind, uh, bago ho kami magkahiwaiwalay, isa sa iniisip ko, papaano magtutuloy-tuloy ang family altar? Praise God through technology, patuloy pa rin ho kami naging isa sa family altar. Even that prayer, yung prayer po namin ay naganap from three different location But in the spirit, we are one. Kaya po, naniniwala po ako na yung ginawang pagbubuo ng Panginoon sa family altar, pagpapatibay ng Panginoon sa bawat pamilya para maging matibay ang family altar, ay hindi matatapos even after the lockdown was lifted. Maski magkahiwaiwalay po kayo ng inyong pamilya dahil ang iba'y nasa trabaho, ang iba'y nasa probinsya, ang iba'y nasa Manila, Maging nasa abroad, we can still be in one place, okay? Performing, observing our family altar using technology. So, salamat sa Panginoon sapagkat uh, what God has started, He is faithful to bring it to completion. Yesterday, tinalakay ko po yung kahuli-hulihang divine prescription for the immunity of God's people. So, just for a quick start, gusto kong uh, muli nating balikan what are the seven divine prescription for the immunity of God's people number one embrace embracing spiritual covering number two observing the Lord's Supper in a worthy manner number three releasing your thanks and offering number four growing in your spiritual maturity number five uh, Walking in uh, explicit obedience. And number six, living in the life of righteousness. And yesterday, tinapos ko yung pampito, which is relocating yourself in Zion. Relocating yourself in Zion. At uh, bagamat natapos ko yung kahapon, but today I'm going to start a new series, okay, which is 
also connected to Zion. At uh, ang title po ng ating pag-usapan ay Building the Unusual Church. Building the Unusual Church. Kapon sinabi ko ito na how to build your church on the pillars of Zion, pero ipinaparapraise po ang uh, other title po nito is Building the Unusual Church. Now, to start with, gusto kong buksan po natin ang ating mga Biblia, mga kapatid, sa Hebrews chapter 12. In Hebrews chapter 12, okay? Beginning verse, I think, uh, 22. Tingnan natin. All right. Simulan po natin sa 18. Beginning verse 18. Okay? Hebrews chapter 12. Okay, verse 18. Ganito po ang sinasabi ito. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire, to darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast or to such a voice speaking words, that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them. Because they could not bear what was commanded, if even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. Verse 22, But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous man made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Alam niyo mga kapatid, ito pong ating mga talatang, talatang binasa is one of the most difficult scriptures to be understand. In the Bible, uh, by the grace of God, I want to, I want to try. No, gusto kong subukan itong himayin sa inyo so that uh, we will be able to see what God wants us to see from this scripture. Now, to start with, gusto kong uh, himayin tong mga talatang ito uh, into two categories. Categories. Yung Hebrews 12, beginning uh, verse 18 to 21, speaks of the checks as usual, or the natural church. Ulitin ko, ha? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 18 to 21, describes the characteristic of the church as usual. Okay? Alam niyo yung salitang, kumusta na? Ito, business as usual. Kung merong business as usual, meron din church as usual. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, that is the kind of church that stays in that natural But verse 22 to verse 24 speaks of the church unusual. Okay? God wants us to build the church unusual. Not the church as usual, but the church unusual. Because connecting and committing yourself to the church unusual will what? Give you immunity. Ayaw po sa ating pinag-aralan ng mga nakaraang linggo. One of the blessings in the provision we'll get from connecting and committing ourselves in the church unusual is the immunity that the people needs, lalong-lalo na sa mga presenting panahon na ating kinakarap. Verse 22 to 24 speaks of what? The description of the church unusual or what we call the Zion Church. Okay? Ang sabi ng verse 22, But you have come to Mount Zion. Mount Zion is the spiritual stature of what? A mature church. Ulitin ko, Zion is the spiritual stature, the full spiritual stature of a mature church. And God wants every believers to relocate ourselves from this kind of church. God wants us to live The old paradigm, the old way of doing church, the church as usual. Because I believe this pandemic caught by COVID-19 
becomes our transition point. Our transition point to migrate from the usual church to the unusual church. But we cannot migrate ourselves from the unusual church without God opening the scripture for us. Pero gusto kong magsimula tayo doon sa magiging kahuli-huli ang uh, kapahayagan mula sa mga talatang ito. Verse 22, God wants us to come to Mount Zion. If there is one thing that God wants us to experience, is what? Huh? To come up higher in our spiritual stature, not only us, but also our churches. Okay? So that we'll be able to see the things to come as Revelation 4.1 says. Now, speaking of Zion, okay, balikan ko ulit, okay, yung aking tinalakay kahapon. What is Zion? Because Zion describes the church unusual, okay? Now, what is Zion? Ulitin ko, balik ulit po tayo sa 2 Samuel chapter 5. Second, okay, it's found in 2 Samuel chapter 5, okay? Chapter 5, beginning verse 6 to 10. The king and his men marched to Jerusalem to attack the Jebusite who lived there. The Jebusite said to David, You will not get in here. Even the blind and the lame can ward you off. Okay? So, masyadong matindiho ang bilig ng mga Jebusite sa kanilang sarili na hindi makakalapit doon si David. Na mas kinaho mga bulag at mga lumpo kaya hadlangan si David at kanyang army. They thought David cannot get in here. Nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, which is the city of David. On that day, David had said, Anyone who conquers a Jebusite will have to use the water shop to reach those lame and blind, who are David's enemies. That is why they say the blind and the lame will not enter the palace. David then took up residence in the fortress and called it the city of David. He built up the area around it from the terraces inward, and he became more and more powerful because the Lord God Almighty was with him. Yan po ang uh, dito sa verse 10. And he became more and more powerful because the Lord God Almighty was with him. So, from this scripture, masasagot po natin, what is Zion? So, in the natural, this is the description of Zion. Zion is a fortress in Jerusalem initially occupied by the Jebusite. Second, David and his army captured this fortress and called it the city of David. Third, it was in this fortress that David took up his residence. David built his palace in the fortress of Zion. And then number four, Zion was a place of safety for David. And it becomes invincible because God also dwells in this place. So it was not only David who dwells in Zion, but God also dwells in this place. Psalm 132. Balikan mo natin ang Psalm 132. Okay? Because Psalm 132 provides for us principle on how to make our churches the unusual church. Ang sabi po nito, For the Lord has chosen Zion, he has decided for his dwelling, saying, This is my resting place forever and ever. Here I will sit in throne, for I have decided. I will bless her with abundant provision. Her poor I will satisfy with food. I will clothe her priest with salvation, and her faithful people will ever sing for joy. Here I will make a horn grow for David and set up a lamp for my anointed one. I will clothe his enemies with shame but his head will be adorned with a radiant crown. Okay? So, makikita po natin, mga kapatid, na ito po yung description ng lugar na kung saan tinawag na Zion. It becomes invincible not only because David in his army built the palace of the king there, higit sa lahat, ang Diyos mismo ang pumili po dito po sa, ta sa lugar na to para maging eternal dwelling place ng Diyos dito po sa the indeed. Kaya nga po, if we choose to say in the place God has chosen for us, we are assured of His abundant provision, we will be satisfied with everything God gives, 
we will clothe in righteousness, our influence will continue to spread, and we will cause our enemies to be ashamed because of the immunity we have in Zion. Yan po ang uh, katotohan ng ibinigay po sa atin ng Psalm 132. Okay? Ulitin ko, Zion is the church and usual sa atin. Sa ating panahon, what is Zion? Zion is the spiritual state of the mature church. The reference point of that maturity is the full stature of Christ manifested in the life of His corporate church. That's why when we say Zion today, it means Zion is a church unusual and we need to relocate ourselves to this church because it's so many dimensions that must be accessed and immunity is one of these dimensions. Mga kapatid, maladalas yung marinig sa akin that one of the purpose of this lockdown, of this pandemic, is for God to shake everything that can be shaken so that everything that is unshakable will remain. God wants to know who are His. God wants to know whose faith stands on His promises. Because those who stand in Him, those who live in Him, those whose faith stand on His promises are the one that will become unshakable. Those who are unshakable will remain. And they that remain are the ones, makinig kayo, they that remain are the ones who will reach this place called Zion. Now, in building the church of usual, in building the church that God wants us to relocate with, the church unusual or the called Zion, ano po ang mga katangian na makikita natin sa mga tao who belongs to the unusual church? Because hindi po po pwede na yung katangian ng mga tao doon sa church as usual ang manatiling katangian ng mga tao that belongs to the church unusual. So I want you to have a grasp, I want you to know and understand the characteristic of the people that belongs to the church unusual. Baga matipitin na laki ko sa inyo kahapon, uulitin ko po, bibilisan ko lang po kung ano ang mga katangian ng mga tao na masusumpungan po natin doon po sa church unusual. Okay? It is found in Psalm 84. It is found in Psalm 84, beginning verse okay, 1 to 7. Ganito po ang sinasabi. Okay, saglit na po. Psalm 84. Okay, Psalm 84, 1 to 7. Ganito sinasabi. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faith, faint for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself. Where she may have her young, a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose heart are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, They make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also covers it with pools. And they go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. What are the truth that we need to ponder out of this scripture? Ang sabi mo rito, first truth that I want you to know and understand, Zion is God's dwelling place on earth. The Bible says, The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Bagamat ang buong mundo, siya ang may gawa. But God chooses a particular place on earth to become His dwelling place. Okay? At yung place na yun is called Zion, which is the city of David. Okay? So, Zion is God's dwelling place on earth na nandung po sa puso ng mga anak ng Diyos na gustong-gustong nilang puntahan, gustong-gustong nilang marating. 
Now, in this scripture, I'm not speaking about the physical Zion. I'm now speaking about the spiritual Zion. The spiritual Zion na tinutukoy ko is the very presence of God. So, if you want to build the church as usual, pastors, if you want to build the church as usual, or believers, if you want to be connected and committed to the church as usual, we all need to desire the presence of God. You will never, never enter the dimension of the church as usual if you don't delight, if you don't enjoy the presence of God. Tingnan po natin, ha? Naalala nyo, balik po tayo dito sa uh, dito po sa Hebrews chapter 12, 18. Tingnan nyo, ha? Hebrews chapter 12, base verse 18. If you don't enjoy the presence of God, you will refuse its manifestation. Okay? 12, 18. Ang sabi dito, For you have not come to a mountain that can be touched into a blazing fire, into darkness and gloom and whirlwind, and to the blast of a trumpet and the sound of words, which sound was such that those who heard begged no further word to be spoken for them. For they could not bear the command if even a beast touched the mountain, it would be stoned. And so terrible was a sign that Moses said, I am full of fear and trembling. See, makikita mo natin dito. The physical manifestation of God's power and glory resisted by the people of God. The people of God refused to listen to the voice of God when God manifests His presence to them. In relocating yourself to the church and usual, in building the church and usual, the first thing that needs to take place in the hearts of every believer and every pastor is that we have this longing and desire of the presence of God. Just like David ang sabi niya, One thing I ask of the Lord, and this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Why is it David longs to dwell in the house of the Lord? Because in the house of the Lord, he will find the presence of God. It is the presence of God that makes the house of the Lord a delightful place to stay. Mga kapatid, that should be the main thing that God wants to see in our hearts. The presence of God. Okay? Now, balik ulit tayo, mga kapatid. So, the first thing that we need to know and understand out of this Psalm 18, 4, 1-7, is that the Zion, Zion, is God's dwelling place on earth. Second, to reach this place, we must set our hearts to a journey towards Zion. If we want to reach this place called Zion, the dwelling place of God, we must have this resolve in our hearts. Whatever things, whatever happen, kung maglilin ko, drin lang ako sa Diyos. Kung ako po'y magiging kristyano rin lang, ako po'y magpapakatotoo at kung maglilingkod ako sa Panginoon, kinakailangan sa paglilingkod ko sa Panginoon, dala ko ang kanyang presensya. We cannot become an effective workers of the Lord Jesus Christ if we are not the carrier of God's presence. But to become the carrier of God's presence, we need to reach the place of His presence. To become the carrier of God's presence, we need to reach the place of God's presence. So to reach this place, we must set our hearts to a journey towards Zion. So if you want to become the carrier of God's presence, we need to set our hearts on this pilgrimage, on this journey. Third, we must be sustained by the strength of God to reach Zion. In this journey towards the presence of God, we must be sustained by the strength of God. And what is the strength or how can we access the strength of God? John 4, 34 says, My food, my strength, is to do the will of God who sent me and to finish His work. If we have the, scope, the commitment to do and finish what God has commanded us to do, mas kina sa panahon na tayo kinakapos na, napapagod na, nagugutom na, nagihina pa, yet, ang decision pa rin natin ay tapusin ang pinagagawa. You will have an ever-increasing supply of God's strength that will cause you to finish your assignment. The commitment to do 
and finish the will of God in our life is what will cause us to receive the strength we need to reach Zion and finish our assignment. Number four, the highway to Zion will be established in the heart of those who longs in years for the presence of God. Hindi po tayo masasidetrack, hindi po tayo malilito if God sees the longing in the yearning of our heart is not other than the presence of God. When the presence of God, the longing for the presence of God is established in the heart, the Lord will create that highway to Zion. Even sa iyo, sabihin nun, magkakaroon ka ng internal guide para hindi ka malito, para hindi masidetrack, para hindi ka madisip. Ang gandere, derecho mong maabot yung lugar na kung saan pinananahanan ng presensya ng Panginoon. Okay? And then, number five, every barren places or wilderness will become a well-watered garden because of this pilgrimage by the people of God. If you are part of the group of people whose desire is to appear before God in Zion, okay? Gusto kong sabihin sa inyo na sino man ang tao na makukonek sa iyo, sino man ang tao na kung saan magkakaroon ka ng pagkakataong makilala, magkapagministeryo, they will be affected by the presence of God in your life. Lastly, number six, everyone in this pilgrimage will appear before God in Zion. Makinig kayo. Ito po yung naging uh, natutunan ko na ako po ay worship leader. A person who knows how to enter into the presence of God is also the same person that is able to bring or carry the presence of God to others. Ulitin ko ha? A person who knows how to enter the presence of God is also the same person who will know how to bring the presence of God to others. So, this is the spiritual dimension na natututunan at nararanasan ng na mga tao na ang longing at ang yearning ay walang iba kundi ang makarating sa lugar na kung saan tuloy-tuloy nilang mararanasan ang totoong presensya ng Diyos. Now, these people who knows how to enter into the presence of God, these people who knows how to appear before God in Zion, these are the people that will be used by God to build the church and use one. Now, before building the church and use one, gusto ko munang magsimula tayo sa kung ano ang kalagayan ng nakakarami ngayon. Ano ibig mo sabihin, Pastor, sa kalagayan ng mga nakakarami ngayon? Alam ba, most churches today, okay, are living where the church as usual state. Maraming churches ngayon, nakatira sa lugar na kung saan kinalalagyan ng mga church as usual. So, para matiyak natin, ano ba itong church na pinagpapastoran ko? Ano bang church itong kinabibilangan ko? Is it the church as usual or the church unusual? Now, I'm going to share with you the description first of the church as usual or the natural church. It is found in Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12 verse 18. Okay? Hebrews chapter 12 verse 18. Ang sabi ito, 12 verse 18. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire to darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. Kanina nabanggit ko, mga kapatid, that this verse, beginning verse 18, hanggang verse 24, is one of the most difficult verses in the scripture to understand. But let me try to share and make it plain to you. Verse 18 to verse 21 speaks of the characteristic of the church as usual. This is the description of the church as usual. Number one, the church as usual was stuck up in a place where God demonstrated His power to them long ago. What do you think, huh? The church as usual was stuck up. Nastuck na. Okay, kung baga sa ano, na lockdown na, hindi na nakalis. The church as usual was stuck up, locked down in a place where God demonstrated His power to them long ago. 
Ang sabi ng verse 18, You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire to darkness, gloom, and storm. To a trumpet or blast or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it beg that no further word be spoken to them. Ano pa ho itong, itong lugar na to na kung saan ay the Lord demonstrated His power long ago na hindi na sila nakalis doon. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 1, 6-8. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 6-8. Ang sabi nito, The Lord your God said to us at Horeb, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Break camp. Sabi nito, Break camp. And advance into the country of the Amorites. Go to all the neighbors, neighboring people in the Rada, in the mountains, in the western foothills, in the Negev, and along the coast to the land of Canaanites, and to Lebanon as far as the Great Sea, Great River, the Euphrates. See, I have given you this land. Go in and take possession of the land the Lord swore He would give to your father, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to their descendant after them. So, dito sabi ng Bible, Once upon a time, the Lord spoke to the Israelites. And when the Lord spoke to them, ano po yung mga naging, uh, ito, ano yung mga naging uh, uh, outward description of the power of God when the Lord spoke to them? Huh? Thunder, lightning, voice. Okay, so matindi pong power ang naranasan po. Matinding manifestation of power. At ang sabi po ng Bible, pagdating sa Deuteronomy, Nanatili na kayo ng matagal rito. Alam niyo, maraming churches, but naman in the past, they have the history of revival. In the past, they have the testimony of the mighty visitation of the Lord sa kanilang church. Pero wala silang kamalay-malay. Matagal nang nakaalis ang Diyos sa nakaraang karanasan, pero itong mga taong to ay nanatili pa roon. Praise God for the manifestation of His power and of His glory. Pero kung hindi po tayo magiging maingat, hindi po tayo magiging discerning sa gawa ng Panginoon, wala tayong kamalay-malay, matagal na po pala tayong iniwanan. At yun po ang nangyari sa bansang Israel. Ano sabi ng Panginoon sa kanila? You have stayed long enough at this mountain. May come and advance into the hill of the Amorites. Umalis na kanito, mag-advance na kayo. I give you the land. You cannot conquer. You cannot take it. You cannot possess it kung kayo ay mananatili sa, kar- sa nakaraan nakaranasin nyo in the past. So, the church as usual was stuck up in a place where God demonstrated His power to them long ago. This is the first description. Okay? And if you're connected and committed to this kind of church or if you're a pastor na ganito pa rin ang church na pinagpapastoran nyo I'm sorry to tell you, you will become an irrelevant church sa ating panahon. I'm sorry to tell you na hindi po ninyo maabot ang plano, ang layunin ng Diyos kung bakit tayo ay naging church sa ating kapanahonan. We need to rise up. Come up higher! And I'm going to show you the things to come. The second description is this. The church as usual becomes familiar with the supernatural manifestation of God's glory but unchanged by it. Holy thing, ha? The church as usual becomes familiar with the supernatural manifestation of God's power and glory but unchanged by it. Balik ulit tayo, mga kapatid. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, chapter 18. Ang sabi rito, You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that's burning with fire. Imagine a mountain that's burning with fire. Darkness and gloom and storm, the manifestation of God's presence. To a trumpet blast or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it beg that no further words be spoken to them. So, ibig sabihin nito, this is the supernatural <coughs> manifestation of the presence of God. With this supernatural manifestation, wala pong pangyayari, wala pong pagbabako ang nangyari sa kanila. Now, tingnan nyo, ang karanasan ng Israel, for 40 years, ulitin ko, for 40 years, almost every day, they live in miracle. Every day, they live in miracle. Bakit ko sinabing every day, they live in miracle? May pagising pa lang ng umaga. Madilim pa, wala pang araw. 
Ang pagkain nila, dumarating na. Hindi sila nagtatanim, hindi sila nagani, hindi sila nag-impok. Every day, the Lord gives them manna from heaven. Hindi nila kayo nakailangan ng centralized air condition. Why? Because of the cloud by day. Hindi nila kayo nakailangan ng centralized uh, heater because of the pillar of the cloud. Wala silang kinakailangang security agency to guard them 24 by 7. Why? Because of that pillar of cloud and cloud by day, it becomes their protection. So sa madaling salita, mga kapatid, they are practically living in miracle every day. Now, what happened to them? Those generations failed to enter the promised land. As I have to Joshua and Caleb. Ano ibig sabihin nun? No? Ibig bang sabihin nun no, eh, walang nangyari pagbabago sa buhay ng mga tao ito? Yes. To see a miracle does not guarantee a change life. Kaya nga, nung mababasa po natin in the book of Luke, I think it's found in Luke chapter 16 or 17. Yung parapol patungkol po doon sa mayaman kay Lazarus. Naalala po ba ninyo? Namatay si Lazarus at ang mayaman. Si Lazarus po ay napunta sa piling ng amang Abraham, paraiso. Yung mayaman ay napunta sa impyerno. Sobrang paghihira po nung mayaman. Ang pakiusap niya kay amang Abraham, amang Abraham po, di ba utusan niyo si Lazarus na bumalik sa lupa para pangaralan ang aking mga kapatid dahil ayaw kong sila'y mapunta rito sa impyerno kalagayan mo ito. Ano sabi ng Panginoon sa kala? Hindi na kinakailangan mo baba pa si Lazarus. Nandun na yung mga ngaral. Nandun na yung salita ng Diyos. Iba pa rin, Panginoon. Iba pa rin ang mga Abraham kung mayroong patay na muling mabubuhay. Ang sabi ni ang mga Abraham, hindi. Kung sila ay hindi nakikinig sa salita ng Diyos, mas ilang patay ang pababain, hindi pa rin sila magbabato. The story of the Israelites who failed to enter the promised land is a testimony of unchanged and unrepentant people in spite and despite of living miracle for 40 years. Living in miracle for 40 years. Miracle does not guarantee to give you a changed life. What will guarantee a changed life is what? Christ in you. Receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. If anyone is in Christ, it's a new creation. All things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Religion will not guarantee a changed life. Education will not guarantee a changed life. It is Christ in you. The hope of glory will give you a changed life. So the church as usual becomes familiar with the supernatural manifestation of God's glory, but and change with it. The older generation failed to enter the promised land. They all died in the place called Moab. And what is the meaning of Moab? The meaning of Moab is being a change. Unwilling to be changed. You know, ibig sabihin ng Moab. Unwilling to be changed. That is why all of them except for Joshua and Caleb died in the place called Moab because of their unwillingness to be changed. Remember, 40 years of living in miracle. Pero ano nangyari sa iba lang yun? Miracle fails to change them. Psalm 95. Let's go to Psalm 95. Psalm 95 verse 10 to 11. For 40 years, I was angry with that generation. Imagine. Almost every day, may himala na. But the testimony of the Lord is this. For 40 years, I was angry with a generation. I said, there are people whose heart go astray. And they have not known my ways. They have seen the hands of God, but they don't know the ways of God. They have seen how God works. They have seen how the power of God manifests. That they are ignorant of the ways of God. Verse 11, So I declare on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. This is a description of the church as usual. Okay? Ay, walang nangyari. Ilang taon ng simbahan. Ilang taon na nagdiriwang ng kanila pong uh, church anniversary. Wala pa rin pagpapago. Alam niyo ba? 
maraming miyembro sa church ngayon, wala pa rin pag-ibarag. Dumaan na sa lockdown, dumaan na sa pandemic, dumaan na sa crisis. Nung magsisimula ang pandemic, medyo, medyo, uh, na lumahan lang po ang puso. Pero ngayon, nandito na tayo from ECQ to MECQ, nasa GCQ na tayo, papunta na sa MGCQ, unti-unti, ano nangyayari? Tumitigas ulit. Mga kapatid, I want you to understand this. If we are unwilling to be changed, isa lang ang ibig sabihin niya, even if you are attending your church, you're not unwilling to be changed, anong ibig sabihin niya? You are in the church as usual. Okay? For 40 years, I was angry with that generation. I said, there are people who start go astray, and they have not known my ways. So I declare an oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. Don't just focus on the power of God. Learn to enter. Learn to apply. Learn to embrace the ways of God. Number three, characteristic. The church as usual refused to listen and believe the one speaking to them from heaven. Balik ulit tayo, Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 19. Okay? Ang sabi ng Bible, To a trumpet blast or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it beg that no further words be spoken to them. Imagine, the power of God comes, the manifestation of God's presence comes, and God spoke to them. But what is the reply? Response? That those who heard it beg that no further word be spoken to them. Because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The church as usual refused to listen and believe the one speaking to them from heaven. These are the people that belong to the church as usual. Mas gusto pa nila yung mga tradisyon. Mas gusto pa nila yung mga regulasyon. Mas gusto pa nila yung kanilang mga kung ano-anong uh, Paniliwala galing sa matatanda-tanda. Hey, no, mga kapatid, we want to live man shall not by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. God wants to speak to us. The problem is we have this unregenerated spirit that always refuse to hear the voice of God. Church, as usual. In Hebrews 10, 12, 25, See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did this not escape and they refuse him who warned them on earth, how much less will we if we turn away from him who wants us from heaven? God wants to speak to us. That is why we need to go higher because if you don't go higher, if you don't grow your structure in God, the moment God speaks to us, our unregenerated spirit, our carnality will always resist and refuse what? The now word from heaven. Marami sa inyo mga pastor, maaari nagtataka tayo. Every time you listen, every time you hear the messages from SVB, you know it's it's fresh. It's now. It's a proceeding word. Pero malaking question, bakit hindi ito ini-embrace ng mas marami? You know why? Because their frequency, the frequency of their spirit is that fine tune. Really called the frequency of their spirit is not fine-tuned. And because they are not fine-tuned, they were able to rise up in a spiritual dimension where you can clearly hear what God is saying to the church today. These churches, who is called the church as usual, will always reject, resist, refuse the word of God. Number four, the church as usual do not have the spiritual dimension that will carry the grace and the presence of God. Verse 21. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I'm trembling with fear. So, when the presence of God comes to them with all its manifestation, the sight was so terrifying. Kakaibaho yung pagtotoo ni David? 
One thing I ask of the Lord, and this is what I said, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Why? Because of the presence of God. But how come na ang reply, ang response ni David was different from the reply of these people? For them, the sight was terrifying. But for David, is what? It's a delightful thing to stay in the presence of God. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I said, that I may dwell. David long, yeah, for the presence of God. And he is delighted to stay in the presence of God. Samantala, sa mga taong hindi fine-tuned ng spiritual frequency, what happened? It's terrifying. Hindi sila makatagal. At ako po, matalas ko pong gawing gates ito. Sa mga seminars ko, if there are leaders, workers, pastors, who can stay long. Kasi po, pag ako'y nag- uh, sa seminar, pinakamababa po isang araw. Hindi ako sanay sa isang session. Okay? Sanay po ako sa isang araw. At may malungkot sapagkat there are leaders, workers, even pastors who don't have the spiritual capacity to receive fresh manna from heaven. You know why? Because they belong to the church as usual. The church as usual do not have the spiritual dimension that will carry the grace and the presence of God. The presence of God for them, the manifestation of the presence of God for them is very fine. Okay? In Revelation 4, what it says, Come up higher. If you want to enjoy the presence of God, come up higher. And I'm going to show you the things to come. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 2. Ang sabi ng Bible, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 2. Hanggang verse uh, 9. Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is a mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then you'll be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are ears together with Israel, members together one body, and sharers together in the promises in Christ Jesus. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of His power. Although I am less than the list of all the, God, the Lord's people. This grace was given me to preach the Gentiles, the boundless riches of Christ, and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. Kanina binanggit ko. The people in the church as usual will refuse to listen the fresh word from heaven. They will not enjoy the presence of God. They will not embrace the proceeding word of God. Why? Because for them, boring ang presensya ng Panginoon. The only way for the church, as usual, to enjoy the presence of God, the manifestation of His presence, the only way for the church, as usual, to embrace the coming of the now word of the Lord is for them to rise up in higher spiritual dimension. And the way for them to rise up on a higher spiritual dimension is by being connected with somebody that is called the carrier of their grace because when they're connected to the carrier of their grace, mga kapatid, the carrier of their grace will not only open the scripture for them but will release what? The grace that they need in order for them to what? To rise up. They will understand the mysteries of Christ. Every understanding, unfolding of the revelation of the mysteries of Christ will cause them to rise up. Hindi mangyayari sa kanila yan if they're not connected to the carrier of their grace. Bakit mahirap sa kanila mag-connect sa carrier of their grace? Because the spirit is so weak. So, what to do with our spirit to become strong? Let's go to Acts. Acts chapter 20 verse 32. Okay, 20 verse 32. Ang sabi rito, now I commit you to God and to the word of His grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. So the only way for the spirit of these believers, ministers, to become strong, so that they will rise up in a higher spiritual dimension, is what? To consistently receive the word of His grace. Pag sinabi word of His grace, ano ibig sabihin niyan? It is the relevant, the word that's relevant. It means the proceeding fresh now. Reign of word of God. Relevant. Grace. It enables them. It gives them the power to break through. At mga kapatid, gusto kong sabihin sa inyo, just 
like what Hebrews chapter 12 verse 18 to 21 says hindi po yun ang lugar na gusto pagdalan sa atin ng Panginoon God doesn't want us to reach that mountain where the manifestation of God is being resisted refused where the voice of God is being resisted and refused that is not the kind of place by which God wants to bring His church. Any churches who possesses this description, that church is called the church as usual. But, ang sabi ho ng Bible, in verse 22, chapter 12, but you have come to Mount Zion. You have come to Mount Zion. This is the place where God wants to bring His church. Mount Zion. At yan po ang tatalakayin ko sa inyo, sa business. How to build the unusual church. I'm going to share with you the 10 pillars of Zion. Kung tayo pong mga lingkod ng Diyos, katuwang ng mga elders, workers, and church, sama-samang itatayo po ang churches natin, then makikita po natin how our people will rel relocate from the church as usual to the unusual church. Maraming salamat po sa inyong muling pakikinig at ang dalangin ko habang kayo patuloy na nakikinig natututo sa ongoing progressive revelation ng mga salitang ito. My prayer is that it will continue to create a hunger of the Word and of the Spirit in you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness, we thank you for your faithfulness in the lives of every hearers, listeners of God, watchers of God of this live stream. I pray in the name of Jesus that as they continue to follow the teachings of God of the School of Church Builder, sino man Panginoon ang nagsasalita dito, you will continue to create that thirst and hungry, hunger. At ikaw nagsabi, blessed are those who are thirst and hungry for they shall be filled. I declare, Father God, that only in filling of the Word and in filling of the Spirit, I declare that as they listen, you will fine-tune their spiritual frequency. I pray in Jesus' name that you'll cause their feet to be readjusted, O God. Hallelujah to the direction of the Holy Spirit. I pray that as they continue to listen, Father, in the name of Jesus, you will open the Scripture for them. You will open their eyes. You will open their ears. You will open their hearts, O God, that they may see the glorious things, O God, to come. And as I pray, as they listen and watch, Every streaming, O oh God, they will receive the power to prevail in the grace to govern. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. See you po next Friday. Pero maski po, hindi ako nakapagsilita ng Monday at saka Thursday at saka Saturday. Kung paano po kayong masugit na sumusubaybay dito sa daily streaming ng School of Church Builder. Makinig po tayo, manood po tayo sa so, maski po sino po ang uh, nagkatuwang uh, ko po sa pagtuturo dito. Because I do believe that God will also speak to you the way God speak to you. Sandaling ako po ay natuturo. God bless us all. In Jesus' name, enjoy life. Were you blessed with the message today? If so, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell button below for updates. Thank you for watching and see you next streaming.